Welcome back to Boiler Bites. A few years ago, the Brian Lamb School of Communication at Purdue University began a privately funded peacebuilding initiative, which helps countries around the world create a space in which local citizens come to a peaceful resolution of the issues facing their regions. This next segment will look at one such issue that has been resolved with the help of the Purdue Peace Project. The Purdue Peace Project is a locally-led political violence prevention initiative. We currently have projects in, um, in Ghana, Nigeria, and Liberia, and we're looking to expand in El Salvador and Burkina Faso very soon. We were fortunate a few years ago to receive support to launch this amazing initiative that convenes local citizens in West Africa and Central America to design and implement projects that they believe will lead to the prevention of political violence. What we do is we uh, assist and encourage local citizens uh, to build peace in their own communities. We are not the ones doing the peace building. We are just helping those people there in, in those countries um, discuss issues relevant to their communities that may lead to political violence and discuss solutions to these issues. The Petit Priest Project is kind of community-driven. It's, it's, it's something that comes from the community. It's something that comes from the people themselves and it is gradually developed and then finally it is being supported. So that's what makes the Purdue Peace Project different. It is the community who says, this is what we want. This is how we want to do what we want to do. Sometimes you have a community where there are two people, two groups of people fighting over either land, boundary, chieftaincy, resource management or resource allocation. And to bring the two groups together as opposition people is not easy. Probably our biggest and longest lasting project to date is with pen pen riders, which are motorcycle taxiists. Many of them are former child soldiers during the Liberian Civil War. And after the war, they didn't have any job because they didn't have uh, education. They needed to make a living. So they beca uh, became motorcycle taxi drivers. And they're a very important part of the economy. Uh, they help people go from one place to another. The problem with pen pen drivers after the end of the Civil War was that uh, they were kind of violent, uh, and uh, sometimes they were not in good relationship, especially with the Liberian National Police and with their customers. So the goal of our project is to build good relations between pen pen drivers and the Liberian National Police. One of our first projects in Liberia was bringing together pen pen riders, police members of the Ministry of Transport, to engage in a dialogue about how to promote peace between these different groups of people. When we first started working with these young men, they, it, was, it was a big challenge. They never wanted to see us. The fact that we are talking about peace, it was like crazy thing we were talking about. And we insisted, we decided to bring on board uh, commercial motorcyclists to be a part. And then we, we came up with the Pen Pen Peace Network, that is the Commercial Motorcyclist Peace Network. And this network comprised of uh, 20 members from different stakeholders, the Liberian National Police, the Pepe and Riders, the unions, and community members. And these were people who came together to work on this project. To now be working harmoniously with the Liberian National Police and with the Ministry of Transport. About 10 years ago, I think if somebody suggested that that was a possibility, many people would have rolled their eyes and said that's not a possibility. But I think, you know, through the work that we've been able to do, providing the space for those groups to come together um, and to work on projects that both of them care about together, um, those relationships have started to, to be repaired. For me, that was a really exciting instance where the approach was able to work, right? So I was sitting in the room, I actually saw you know, the tension, the conflict playing out, but then watched people be able to get past that in a way and recognize that they all had something, a shared concern that they could come together around and actually move forward to achieve peace. This is something that they wanted to, to do themselves and have a voice in the, in the system and have a voice in um, helping their, their city develop. Um, and so that is very, very powerful for me uh, to see these groups come together and emerge as leaders. Letting people who are involved in a situation take charge and come up with their own solutions 
and then be committed to implementing the solutions. It's something that I'm very much committed to. And they also feel happy that somebody comes to them and says, you know, I have a problem, can you help me solve it? And then they feel good. So emotionally, people feel that they, they are making a positive contribution towards the development of society. And when I find that I've been able to contribute towards peace in the community, that's the same way I feel. For me personally, the PVP has been a very humbling experience and a very broad, broadening experience, enriching experience in terms of learning about culture uh, and um, learning to be compassionate. Some of the work that we do is uh, quite emotional and it teaches us to just understand others. It's amazing to me when we first get there how many times people will tell us no one has ever invited us to be a part of an initiative like this before and they show that appreciation. Um, but then they're really appreciative, I think, and um, really impacted when they see the results of their actions, of, of working together. Um, those are moments that are really inspiring to me. In the coming years, the Purdue Peace Project is looking to expand its efforts in Africa, South America, and other regions around the world. That wraps up another Boiler Bites. Check us out online at BoilerBites.com. We'll see you next time.